up guys just want to give you guys uh an updated situation with the uh the 2020 c8 corvette that i ordered uh, it's been a couple of weeks since i posted a video on youtube i've just been totally swamped uh just with my businesses trying to get a lot of stuff done for the end of the year and uh i just got an email from the manager of the dealership i ordered the car from hey you guys are gonna cry this is this is hysterical um I didn't think I was going to be like the first one to get the car, that's for sure, but I am number 646 on the list. Now, if you think about it, the number sounds pretty high, but considering that the Corvette's going to be so mass produced, uh, I don't think it's going to be that far out, but you know, we don't really know. So they're telling me that the first production batch has been sold out and they took orders and sold it out years ago. And that's something that I wasn't willing to do. Like I said, when, when a, a car manufacturer uh, starts talking about rumors of the new model, the new C8, blah, 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 you never really know if they're gonna execute it because General Motors is not the most reliable company as far as throwing something out there as a concept car and actually making it happen. Uh, like I said, the mid-engine Corvette has been an idea for like over 20 years and finally they brought it to fruition. But, uh, so I wasn't gonna be the one four years ago, it's going to give a dealership a couple of thousand dollars to say, hey, put my name on a list if this car never was even going to happen. Uh, and a lot of people, when the C7 came out, apparently did that. Uh, you know, Corvette fans and people that are just brand loyal, uh, they must have had inside information or really were confident that the C8 project was really going to happen. So the situation is, on number 646, that means there's 645 more people that are going to get their car prior to me. Now, the um, reason I'm posting this video, a lot of my fans, a lot of my customers went out and ordered the car as well, all over the country. So what I want to know from you guys, have you gotten a production order number slot yet? Now, is the order slot for your dealer, for your district, for your, you know, like the Northeast, the Southeast, the Midwest? I'm just curious. Does anybody out there know more inside information? That's why I'm shooting this quick video while I'm driving right now, is how many cars in the first batch of production of the C8 is General Motors planning to produce? Is it 10,000? Is it 50,000? Is it 100,000? If anybody out there has that information somewhere circulated on the web and it's accurate, please post it in the comments section below. For everybody that's ordered the car years ago, post when your dealership has notified you to do the build, spec out the options, and when will you take delivery? Will you take delivery in November of 2019 or December of 2019, or they're, they're gonna push it over to the first quarter of 2020, which is gonna be after the new year? Have anybody given you that information? Please post it in the comment section below. Now, another thing too is, I want to know when the C7 came out. It was a popular car; everybody bought it. You know that they were, they were waiting for it. It was definitely a nice upgrade over the C6. Nicer interior, more technology, all of that. Uh, I want to know what the production numbers were when they launched the C7. Uh, I believe it was 2014, 2015. I, I'm not sh exactly sure when they rolled it out. How many did they produce? If anybody has that information, and you're a Corvette enthusiast and you follow the brand and you've owned C5, C6, C7s, post that information below. Because like I said, I don't really follow General Motors that much. I haven't owned the GM car in a number of years. And I really just kept that stuff off my radar because I'm just involved in so many other things. So the reason for this video, I want to know what number slot you guys are at. I want to know if any of you guys have gotten information from your dealerships anywhere across the country as far as when your car might show up. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't really think the car for me, my order was gonna come in by the end of the year. That was a little optimistic. But what I think is gonna happen, because the dealership is promising me the car at MSRP, which is fine. What I think is gonna happen to not only me, to a lot of you guys out there who are gonna be very impatient, depending on when the cars are gonna start landing on the, on the ground, uh, at dealerships and on eBay, on Auto Trader or whatever, there's a good chance that I'll keep the order still in position and I'm not gonna ask for a refund of that money. And maybe I'll buy a car that's already on the ground somewhere else and I will pay a slight premium 
just to get it out of my system and to get the car sooner than later. I don't really know yet, but I'm not going to jump the gun on that right now because I know if I do pay five to ten k over asking price, I'm never going to see that money again as, as, at all. But can I take that car and get it sooner and design and develop products for it where I would recoup that initial hit that I would take on buying it? And that would kind of offset me making a foolish decision on paying over MSRP. But uh, I don't really know, but I'm kind of glad that I did not sell the GT350. And I don't really have plans on doing so because I love this car. I've been driving it every day. Since I posted a Corvette video, I've been driving the GT350 every single day. On the weekends, I've been going up north, going through back roads, just enjoying the car exactly why I bought it for. So the Corvette is just going to be another, like, like, you know, a new car, state of the art. It's very innovative. Uh, it's the talk of the automotive world right now. And I think it's going to be a great car to develop content, manufacture and design products for it. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. So for me, that car made a little bit more sense uh, than the GT500. I got my check back, my $5,000 deposit back from the dealer on the GT500. I got it back on Monday. So... You know, that, that kind of offsets the money that I put towards the Corvette C8 right now. So that's fine. The dealership, I have a good relationship with them. Uh, bought a lot of Shelbys through clients and fans and Raptors. And it just worked out that they said, hey, if you want the GT500, if the car is still on the ground and available, we will give you a call. But I don't think I'm going to want it. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I think it's just not different enough from the 2015 GT Performance Pack and the GT350 for me to say, hey, wow, let me go spend all this extra money. That car's going to be 100 grand. Uh, the way I wanted it spec'd out with the full carbon fiber track pack, it's, it's going to be 100 grand. And I just can't see spending 100 grand. And I don't think spending 100,000 on the GT500 spec'd out the way I want it is going to give me that much of an exhilarating experience driving the car on the street in New York. I, I just think it's gonna be like throwing money out the door. So I think the GT350 is better balanced as far as the power to rate ratio and what it does and of course the manual transmission, it's more analog. I don't really wanna start banging through gears with 760 horsepower uh, on another Mustang S550 platform. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, I'd rather do it on a completely different car altogether where the experience is different. You know, because you go into another S550, even if you start out with an EcoBoost, then you go to a GT Performance Pack, then you go to a GT350, it's still the same driving position, the same dashboard, the same feel above, you know, when you're looking out over the hood, it's, it's all the same. And as a car enthusiast and someone that's been in the business, I like change. I like new experiences. Um, and that's just what it's all about. So post all your comments about the 2020 C8, Post information about production numbers, if you guys have it, delivery dates, what number are you at your dealer, and where in the country are you located with that number? Uh, I'd love to know. So I'm going to start posting regular videos on the 2020 Corvette C8 as I get more information from my dealer, and I want to share with you guys, and hopefully we'll all be in the same position and we'll ride the wave uh, together for production, specking out the cars, and taking final delivery, and then we're all gonna have some really cool stuff to share with once everyone on the channel and across social media. So I'll see you guys soon. Please like, subscribe, and share. Stay tuned to the channel for more updated content and videos, and set your notifications so when I post the next video, you guys will know because YouTube is notorious for deselecting everybody's settings. So I'll see you guys soon. Hit up the website auto-fanatic.com and I'll also post more updates in the automotive lifestyle news section and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.